Now my second patient is Luis. Luis has lymphedema as well as going through wound care with potential lower extremity cellulitis. He also has arthropathy bilateral knees and he is considered under the category of morbid obesity. Um, he also has a potential infection as well as a history of gallbladder disease with a cholecystectomy as well as lower extremity ulcer, um, history of hypertension, hyperlipidema, a spastic colon, bilateral knee arthritis, and a recurrent cellulitis of the lower extremities. Um, now when looking at all of these things, of course he has a lot going on when it comes to just his overall health. Um, a lot of which is in regards to his intestinal and digestive tract. Um, now when we are looking at his overall BMI, he is in the very, very high range of 53.9, um, just based on his height of 70 inches and his weight of 376 pounds. Um, now the current pharmaceuticals that he is being prescribed or has already been taking are um, for high blood pressure, cholesterol, um, GERD, as well as his stomach and intestinal issues from just his past procedures. Um, now while these are going to be important in regards to just his overall maintenance of his health when it comes to his blood pressure and his cholesterol, um, I do believe that instead of pushing towards the pharmaceutical side, um, we can definitely be able to address that and intervene with a change in diet um, and monitoring his diet. Um, and that is working with an RDN, um, which would be really helpful for him to be able to no longer have to take those specific medications. Um, I also feel that that can also play a role in just his overall digestive tract and intestinal health um, because a lot of times those things can, of course, impact um, your body when you are putting things that are foreign into it. So those are things that I would definitely discuss with him, um, but also understand and educate him that there are other ways to be able to maintain that blood pressure as well as those cholesterol levels um, with changes in diet. Um, I will also note that with his labs, he has low levels of creatinine, hemoglobin, hematocrit, um, segmented neutrophils, as well as band forms, um, and he has an IAST as well as high monocytes. Um, of course, that can be contributed to the potential infection that he is experiencing um, within his lower extremity. Now, based on his 24-hour dietary recall, I do feel that his diet is well balanced. Um, now, when looking at it, it looks like it's not, you know, a high sugar diet. It's not consistent of processed or um, high fatty foods, um, which of course I'm sure is contributed to the change in diet that was recommended to him just based on the removal of his gallbladder. Um, it's important to make sure that he is taking in a low cholesterol, low fat diet for those specific reasons. Um, now, weight bias was shown in the recommendation um, from the MD in regards to just his activity um, as well as that low salt, low fat diet. Um, while it may be in part to the fact that he no longer has that gallbladder, I still feel that there is some sign of weight bias because of that as well his act as his activity levels. Um, the other thing is demonstrated by the RN in regards to weight bias um, when it comes to his Braden scale. Now, a lot of what she is basing that Braden scale off of um, has to do with his limited mobility as well as um, adequate nutrition and what they would call chair fast or where he is more sedentary. Um, and then he is also at that high nutritional risk because of the ulcer that he is experiencing. Um, again, I do believe that these are forms of weight bias, um, but maybe not always in the way that um, we typically see weight bias. This one's a little bit more subtle in my opinion, just based on um, what they were seeing um, and not so much based on all these other things that have occurred as well as his history. Um, I would address the situation by of course reevaluating his diet. Um, with both the MD and the RN, um, noticing that he is already kind of going through that process of changing his diet and making sure that he is able to um, just, again, digest and process things the way that we should um, without that gallbladder. Um, I would also want to discuss with the patient himself, um, just in regards to changes of what we can get him from limited mobility into maybe a more active lifestyle. Um, I know that, of course, with his limited mobility and his limited range of motion, um, low impact exercises that he's able to do and just continue being more active um, might be something that we can discuss. Um, and that is, of course, an intervention that 
um, would be in part due to education on his end of things that he would be able to do without causing pain, without irritating or inflaming anything that he might already have in regards to arthritis and things like that. Um, I would also um, want to educate Luis just on best dietary options um, for the items that are easy to digest with his lack of his gallbladder. Um, also learning his motivation for wanting to be more active with his limited mobility um, would be super important. Um, but again, really focusing on that diet for him with his gallbladder would be top notch to make sure that we are keeping a low cholesterol, a low animal protein and egg diet. Um, and increasing that vegetable intake will be really good just in regards to any symptoms that he's been experiencing from um, having his gallbladder removed. Um, but other than that, I again, the weight bias that I saw was in regards to um, both the MD and the RN and kind of where they were at in their evaluation. Um, again, I think that um, it's very subtle, but it's definitely there. Um, and just by addressing with them the things that he's been through um, and realizing that he is already making those changes um, and that that weight might not necessarily be because of um, his lack of trying. It's strictly just based on the fact that maybe he is in that nutritional status from other things.